Samuel was overprotective of his grandchildren and youngest daughters. Miriam later married Darwashi, and they had two boys, Walid and Kush, and a daughter named Abir. Darwashi was an adventurer and loved to travel, and Miriam, not so much. She remarried a man named Piare and had three more daughters, twins Haki and Hakika, and the youngest, Delphi. Miriam's children were much more youthful than many of their cousins, but her youngest son, Kush, there was something about him that drew him to people much older than him, and they enjoyed his company. He loved traveling with his mother and Aunt Nut to visit his relatives and listening to the stories they told. Seeing his children fade away from Sabaoth disappointed Samuel, but he hid his disappointment. He saw them keeping the traditions to please him. But by Cush, being the youngest son of his youngest daughter meant something to Samuel. Samuel noticed the power of Sabaoth in Cush, that which was missing from his children shined in him. Any time Miriam would chastise Cush, Samuel would scold her. Samuel noticed the servants of Sabaoth, Yael, Mletzi, and Shika were paying close attention to Cush. You have heard me mention the Abenians before. Who were they? To explain that, one must go back 955 years to 2235 when men were governed by authority figures such as presidents, kings, and dictators. As always, Sabaoth established light for his people to see in darkness. A six-year-old girl, lying on her bed, heard a voice. We are God's avengers of justice. When we come, the time for praying is over. When we arrive, we lay waste of entire cities, states, and continents. Tell your people this time we are passing through with a warning. The next time we return, it will be too late to ask for mercy. Then, she heard her name. Evelyn. She ran to her grandmother, whom many called Mother Washington. Yes, Ma? She asked, rubbing her eyes. Mother Washington looked at Evelyn and said, What is it, child? Evelyn said, you called me Grandma? With her glasses sitting on the tip of her nose, sewing a scarf, Mother Washington turned toward Evelyn. No, child, go back to bed. Confused, Evelyn returned to her bed and covered up. Laying there about to drift off to sleep, she heard her name again. Evelyn. Mother Washington was reading the Bible, First Samuel, the third chapter when Evelyn returned to her. Yes, Ma, she said. Mother Washington looked up toward the ceiling and said, Oh, I see, Lord. Evelyn asked, Who are you speaking to? Mother Washington slowly got up from her recliner. The same person who is calling you, child. They went to the little girl's room. Mother Washington prayed, and the little girl joined in, and they prayed until the little girl shone like a light, and a magnificent voice said, Akela Malik shall be your name, and many shall follow you with great power. A time will come unlike any other, but we shall place a hedge upon you and yours to bring the power of Sabaoth among men. From that day forward, Akela Malik grew strong as she grew older, and she became an influential leader for the inequality and injustices among her people, and many joined her. The word of Sabaoth spread in the hearts of those who listened to her.